Laodicea, the last of the seven. We date this some 1850 onwards, some basically just the early parts of the 19th century onward. It's basically dealing with rejecting the lukewarm. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These sayings saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, and I wish you were either hot or cold, he's saying. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. See, Laodicea was situated in the, in the valley of Lycus near Colossae, near Hierapolis. All three of these churches were named by Paul in the Colossian letter. An epistle now lost is believed to have been written and sent to Laodicea. It was proud of its wealth and the, condem and the condemnation of the Lord was strong upon it. It was proud of its wealth and the condemnation of the Lord is strong upon it. It's severe and its extinction is threatened. Now it's clear from this letter that Christ would rather have us acting hostile towards Him or zealous for the Lord. This lukewarmness is most offensive. Host, and so He declares He's going to reject it as one rejects nauseous food. The name Laodicea, like the others before, reveals a precious truth about the letter. It means under the authority of the laity. Government in the hands of the body instead of the fivefold ministry of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Ephesians 4 and 11. When this occurs, the prophecy of Paul will come to pass. This he warned. In 2 Timothy 4, verses 34. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. They shall be turned unto doctrines of raptures and escape and, and all that. Now, about the middle of the 19th century, the truth of the gospel, I mean, it was strongly challenged by the rise of a movement uh, popular, popularly called the, the social gospel. Bible criticism filters the church. Evolution is proclaimed as truth. Genesis is suddenly seen as, a, as untruth. The virgin birth is denied. Claims arose that Daniel did not write his prophecy, but it was written during the silent 400 years after these things had come to pass. And most daring of all was denying the deity of Jesus Christ. This, uh, we really had a furious launch of this in 1859 when Darwin publishes, uh, or with the origin of the species, challenges the biblical account of creation. And then the descent of man, that Adam was not fashioned out of the dust of the earth, but descended from apes. You know, prior to Darwin, the German scholar Frederick Strauss, his work, Life of Jesus, denied the divinity of Christ. This is that time of that, quote, higher German criticisms. Another book by the same title, by a French writer, Renan, denied that Christ had performed miracles, had risen from the dead. So warfare is arising between science and theology. And, you know, when ministers accept these lies, Christ says, you know, He leaves their churches. <laughs> these are the terrors amongst us. And never forget that both will grow together. So not only do we have this social attack, you've now been introduced that we have the theological attack of the futurists. 
beginning about this time also. S.R. Maitland, 1826, early 19th century. And look at the ripple effects and the chaos. And other things. And we can talk about many more players here. Verse 17. Because thou sayest I am rich, rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind and you're naked. You know, all around us we, we see wealthy cho- churches void of God's Spirit. And yes, there are wealthy churches full of God's Spirit. I understand that. They think that because their prosperity... Because they have so much prosperity that the the Lord has favored them. Not so. That is not a sign of the favor of the Lord. Paul warned that the church would see, quote, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destined of truth, supposing that gain is godliness. And he went on to, to command, from such withdraw thyself, If you're in massive wealthy churches and the truth is not being taught and the gain is being emphasized as a form of godliness and you're just being manipulated and merchandised, Paul said, get out of there. It's just emphatic is what our Lord said about those to flee the midst of Babylon. Get out of them. You need to turn to 1 Timothy 6 and 5 and read that statement. Mark it in your Bible. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou may be rich and white raiment, that thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy spiritual nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool.